Rob Bryanton, and welcome back once again to the Imagining the Tenth Dimension video blog. Today's entry is dated September 24th, 2008, and uh, if you'd like to read along, go to tenthdimension.com slash blog. Uh, I do invite you to do that because uh, very often there are links within the blog that you can click on then for further reading. Today's entry is called The Placebo Effect, and we start out with the Merriam-Webster Online Dictionary definition of the word placebo. Uh, definition uh, 1A is a usually pharmacologically inert preparation prescribed more for the mental relief of the patient than for its actual effect on a disorder. Uh, definition 1B is what we're talking about more today. Uh, when people talk about the placebo effect, they talk about an inert or innocuous substance used especially in controlled experiments, testing the eff efficacy of another substance as a drug. Uh, in entries like Changing Your Genes and Changing Your Genes Part 2, we've talked about the surprising new scientific research that indicates people can change which genes are expressed purely through changes in lifestyle. The idea that each of us are dealt a certain genetic hand of cards at conception then, which destines us to a particular future of good or poor health depending upon our genetic luck of the draw, is an old idea with much less weight than it used to have. In Crossing Your Arms to Change Your Trajectory, we talked about a different scientific study showing that something as simple as changing your physical stance will have an effect on the decisions you make and the paths you choose. And my book, the chapter, How Much Control Do We Have, wrestled with a related set of ideas. And as we just discussed in my blog entry, we're already dead, but that's okay. Even if we do have a surprising amount of control, there are still a combination of factors that cause us to have one life or another from out of the bush-like branching structure of possible futures that extends out for each of us from our current now. It's a balance, balancing act, as we live out a life where each of us have free will, but are also affected by a certain amount of randomness in the actions that have come before. There was an interesting article by Michael Brooks in the August 23rd issue of New Scientist magazine about the power of the placebo effect, which, is, which discusses research being conducted by doctors Luana Colocca and Fabrizio Benedetti of the University of Turin in Italy. Here are some excerpts from that article. Benedetti and others are now claiming that the true nature of placebo is far more complex. The placebo effect, it turns out, can lead us on a merry dance. Drug trials, Benedetti says, are particularly problematic. An ineffective drug can be better than a placebo in a standard trial, says Benedetti. And the opposite can also be true, as Ted Kapchuk of Harvard Medical School in Boston points out. Often an active drug is not better than placebo in a standard trial, even when we can be confident that the active drug does work, he says. Some researchers are so taken aback by the results of these studies that they are calling for the very term placebo to be scrapped. Others suggest the latest findings undermine the very foundations of evidence-based medicine. Placebo is ruining the credibility of medicine, Benedetti says. The findings threaten the very credibility of modern medicine. How did it come to this? After all, the foundation of evidence-based medicine, the clinical trial, is meant to rule out the placebo effect. If you're testing a drug such as a new painkiller, it's supposed to work like this. First you recruit the test subjects, then you randomly assign each person to one of two groups to ensure both groups are alike. One group gets the painkiller, the other gets a dummy treatment. Then you might think, all you have to do is compare the two groups. It's not that simple though, because this is where the placebo problem kicks in. If people getting an experimental painkiller expect it to work, it will work to some extent. If the control group know they're getting a dummy pill, whereas the other group know they're getting the real drug, the experimental painkiller might appear to work better than the dummy, when in fact, the difference between the groups is entirely due to the placebo effect, so it's crucial not to tell the subjects what they're getting. Those running the trial should not know either, so they cannot give anything away, creating the gold standard of clin clinical trials, the double-blind, randomized, controlled trial. This does not eliminate the placebo effect, but should make it equal in both groups. According to conventional wisdom, in a double-blind trial, any extra effect in the group given the real drug must be entirely down to the drug's physical effect. Okay, later on in the article, and I, I realize I'm quoting a, a lot from the article here, it talks about a study involving a specific painkiller called a CCK antagonist that was known to be effective, and the article continues. 
Now comes the mind-boggling part. When Benedetti gave the same drug to volunteers without telling them what he was doing, it had no effect. If it were a real painkiller, we should expect no difference compared to the routine overt administration, he says. What we found is that the covert CCK antagonist was completely ineffective in relieving pain. If you don't know you've been given the painkiller, it has no effect. So again, if you're reading along with the blog here, click on the link that uh, is provided at this point and uh, read the whole article because there are many more surprises revealed. One of the most important things the article tells us is in determining the effectiveness of a treatment is whether the patient has confidence in their treatment. And homeopathic remedies and other oft-ridiculed alternative medicines then take on a different light in the face of this evidence, as do the suppressed information that psychedelics or meditation may actually be helping people to live happier, healthier lives. And all of this points to the idea that we, as observers of a quantum wave function representing our possible future selves, may have much, well, much more control over our own well-being than we've been led to believe. This is the current poll question then here at the 10th Dimension blog, and it's based upon the New Scientist article we've been looking at today. The question is, the placebo effect is real. People who think they are getting medicine are more likely to get better. This demonstrates that we have more control over our health than we realize. Do you agree or disagree with that? Cast your vote at the 10th Dimension blog. Clearly, the power of the placebo effect does not say modern medicine is bunk. What it does say, though, is that a doctor or caregiver who has the confidence and trust of their patients is going to be more successful in helping those people find their way to good health. And that's an inspiring, scientifically proven fact. Finally, for fun, here's one of the 26 songs attached to this project, and it's about the conundrum of how much control we have as we move one plank frame after another through the bush-like branching structure of possible futures. It's called Making It Up As I Go. Uh, my name's Rob Bryanton from Imagining the Tenth Dimension. Enjoy the journey. Sometimes I'm wrong, but I keep making it up as I go.